From Church Militant Studios, this is the Church Militant Evening News. Hello and thank you for joining us this Wednesday, March 8th. I'm James Fidua along with Kim Tizer here with Catholic News and Context. Tonight, a prelate stays strong in his fight against another prelate speaking heresy. Another diocese looks like it's trying to weasel out of abuse settlements and traditional Latin mass goers in Ohio just got some very bad news. But leading us off tonight, a Midwestern prelate is standing strong on his decision to discuss heresy after a cardinal challenged Catholic teaching on sexuality. Bishop Thomas Paprocki of Springfield, Illinois, said recently his piece discussing heretical prelates has led to an email conversation with Cardinal Robert McElroy, whom he subtly called out in the piece. McElroy had argued sexual sins shouldn't always be treated as grave sins and gays and adulterers should have access to Holy Communion. Yesterday, Church Militant aired the latest episode of Strickland Speaks, featuring, of course, Bishop Joseph Strickland of Tyler, Texas, a bishop who has been supporting Peprocki in his criticism of Cardinal McElroy. Strickland was asked about this latest clergy scuffle. We know they're politicians and they're business people and they're crazy world dominating people that are saying all kinds of crazy things. Yeah. But for the bishops to say things that aren't true, that's devastating because where do the sheep go if the shepherds are not orthodox? True. In the Golden State, a Catholic diocese is now getting sued by its insurance company. On Friday, Catholic Mutual Relief Society of America filed a lawsuit in federal court against its own client, the Diocese of San Diego. The insurance company is accusing the diocese of violating the terms of its policies and claims it should not have to pay out any more abuse settlements for the diocese. This while the San Diego diocese is buried under hundreds of clergy sex abuse lawsuits and is considering bankruptcy. And a small diocese in rural Ohio is removing a monthly traditional Latin mass on a college campus. Bishop Jeffrey Munforton of the Steubenville Diocese recently ordered the immediate end of a monthly TLM, which occurs in the chapel at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. The mass typically attracts hundreds of students. But a weekly TLM remains in place at the nearby St. Peter's Church in the North End. The diocese has cited the recent rescript from Rome, which tightens restrictions on the TLM at parish churches. Turning to our coverage of the German Synodal Path, also known as the Synodal Way, let's bring on Dr. William Mahoney to talk about the aspirations of the German clergy running this show. Doctor, good to see you again. Uh, thanks for having me again. Um, so. Uh, Cardinal uh, uh, Marx and uh, Bishop Betzing, what are some of their uh, goals with this thing and how are they planning to carry that out? Yeah, Georg Betzing, and yeah, they, they kind of talk out of both sides of their mouth, surprising, right, for people trying to destroy the church. But mm -hmm. they, on the one hand, they say, like, for example, there was some push, there's been a lot of pushback. I think we're going to talk about that in a, a later episode mm -hmm. later this week. And Betzing responded to some serious pushback. He wrote a letter, which I read, and he, 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 in a very diplomatic way, basically says, mind your own business. It really just has to do with Germany and don't, don't worry about us. But that's not really their intention because they've made it clear they want this to affect the universal church. So on the one hand, they pretend like, oh, well, it, it's just about us. Don't worry. But they very much want to influence the entire universal, universal church. Um, like what they want, what they want, what they're doing now is they're causing just tons of confusion on already settled matters in the church. And like we talked about earlier and, and pre earlier this week, it's not a real synod. It's the synodal way. It has no actual... Yeah binding anything. It just ends up being deep thoughts by Jack Handy or, or Cardinal Johannes Handy or whatever at this <laughs> point, you know? So it just ends up being like that. But they're they're pretending almost like it has more power than it does, like Karl Marx, uh, not Karl Marx, um, Reinhard, Reinhold Marx, excuse me. Um, <laughs> it's an easy thing to mess up. Yeah, <laughs> Reinhold Marx, he even said that he spoke of the binding of the synodal path. So he's using the language of the church uh, 
in a way that's not doesn't fit here. So uh -huh. it, it's kind of like weird smoke screen where they just they you know they're voting and stuff. And of course, decisions yeah. in the church aren't ultimately made. It's not a dem the church isn't ultimately a democracy. Yeah. Eventually, the pope has to sign off. That's how the Catholic Church works. Even all, all the ecumenical councils of the 21 ecumenical councils, they weren't official until the pope signed off on the yeah. documents. So and, and it, it seems like that's a theme of this uh, German synodal way is to just not come right out and say, you know, the church should the, the church is wrong on this, but they just so doubt and the uh, the you know people of weak faith that are just being pulled along by this begin to sort of think, oh, okay, well maybe they are right, and that's how they seem to change the mind. I mean, I think that's a. a, a Brutal tactic of the uh, it's demonic the left church it's a demonic I guess. tactic. Yes, I exactly. mean, it's it's really the it's the devil in the garden You know did God really say you can't eat from any of the trees so right away? He's lying, right? It's, a, it's just this deceptive thing and it's condemned harshly by well Pius the ninth and the syllabus but also Pius the tenth and Pashani Dominici Gregis he <laughs> condemns the proposition that you are free as a theologian to question the church's teachings on all these things as long as you say you uphold the church's teachings it's a, it, that is a deceptive demonic uh, way to attack the church to to pretend like you believe but yeah. clearly you don't so you're trying to change something which by the way can't be changed that however this goes it's going to fail ultimately correct yeah so doctor thank you for coming on again and uh, we'll see you tomorrow we'll do this whole thing again <laughs> thank you awesome god bless the Vatican is releasing its latest numbers on priests and religious around the world, and it's not looking good. On March 3rd, L'Osservatore Romano reported the church statistics from 2021. Compared to 2020, the number of priests dropped by over 2,300. There were almost 800 fewer religious brothers, over 10,500 fewer religious sisters, and almost 2,000 fewer major seminarians worldwide. In the last year, the number of baptized Catholics rose 1.3%. French bishops are trying to reformulate the con condemnation of sodomy in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. An article in the French Catholic journal La Croix revealed on Friday that some bishops are even discreetly busy reworking the doctrine on sodomy. Archbishop Hervé Giraud of the Archdiocese of saint Nazaire claims the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith is allowing French bishops to suggest alternate formulations, adding these proposals must obviously be examined by the competent dicastery and submitted to the discernment of the Pope. But when we come back, if your thoughts don't align with the government, you might do time in the UK. And the Chinese government is really putting in the work to persecute Christians. Stay tuned, all that and more up next. Thank you for watching the first half of Church Milton Evening News. If you would like to watch the rest of today's episode, please click the link in the description and we'll see you at churchmilton.com. God love you.